So, there are two groups of people. There are saved saints or saved Christians. So let's focus only on the Christians here. Saved Christians. And then let's talk about the second group of people. Lost sinners. Now, all of us are human flesh. So because all of us are human flesh, all of us have the same form and shape body. We all look alike. But what happens is when eternity hits, there's going to be a transformation of both groups of people. You're going to go through a major transformation here. And Satan, what he hates is this. Satan, he hates one, mankind, and two, he hates God. He hates these two beings, man and God. Why? Because God, he hates anything that has to do with him. And then saved Christians, what happens to us is that we're transformed into the image of God. That's why Satan hates anything that has to do with us. So what does Satan do in these last days? He brings a, a, a deforming, a different kind of body appearance, a different sex, a different transformation. That's what he likes. He also likes it when this body that the Lord has uh, blessed us with and created us with, that we abuse it, that we misuse it in its appearance. So what does Satan do? Oh, several cases right here. What does Satan do? Satan, what he will do is that he will use, uh, he's going to use a transformation like body surgery, right? Like Michael Jackson. He doesn't like, you know, the, he doesn't like what God blessed him with, with his nationality and skin, and he just wants to look, I don't know. <laughs> I don't call that white. I call that a, I call that freak. So the thing is, is that that's, why, why do men want to look like women, huh? And why do women want to look like men? So then they'll have body surgery. They don't like the body that they were born with, that God created them to be. And they feel like, no, I am not made this way. I was born differently. So then, thus, you have homosexuality. And then homosexuality turns into transvestites. So then from this, it brings about a sex change. But you know how bad this is? This is really bad because now it's not just LGBTQ. It's just going LGBT, HYZ, FL, LMNOP. And it goes up to the longest is probably 15 letters maybe. But I have to find that. That's crazy, right? Yeah. That is insanity. That is insanity. So they have to make up all these letters and terms so that they can identify with what their sex is. But see, that's what this thing does. What it does, it's so demonic now that you're not stable. You're not mentally stable and you live in confusion. And because they live in confusion, that's why they have to add another term in there of what sex they are. That's not stability. That's not a stable life right there if you have to add another sex over there. So then that's what Satan wants, because he hates mankind. He hates two beings. He hates, he hates Christianity, he hates mankind, and he hates God. He hates God. These are two beings that he hates. So he wants to deform this. So then that body surgery, homosexuality, sex change. He'll also have punk fashion. And, you know, that's you see Satan worshipers, they like this. I'm talking about real genuine Satan worshipers. They like to look like this. Raw concert singers, they like to look like this. <clears throat> normal, so-called normal people, normal young people, want to look like this. And guess what? Saved Christians also want, want to look like this. How about that? So you can't tell from a Wiccan and a saved Christian on how they look, huh? Isn't that telling? Isn't that telling? Satan, he wants to bring, he wants to deform what God created us to be in. He wants you to create your own little zoo. You're a walking zoo with what you look like. You're totally different. You don't look like a normal human. 
Why do they do all that? Piercings, dyeing the hair, and then the punk ripped jeans fashion and stuff like that. Why do they want to look like that? To attract attention, to look different. Not normally what God created them to be. You got your own way what God created you to be. Your own hair, all right, your own body, your own fingers, your own hands, your own hair, your own color of your skin, your own color of your hair, your own color of your eyes, etc., etc. God created you. What you, t what you are supposed to be. But Satan, he wants to change that. What makes you different from a Satan worshiper on how you appear, huh? Not only that, what God, uh, what God doesn't want and what Satan wants to flaunt is that because mankind is covered in sin, in his nature, in his body, what Satan wants to do now is that he wants to deform this by flaunting sin. He wants to flaunt sin. Well, how is he going to flaunt sin? Through nudity. Yep. Through, you know, short shorts. You know, it's not just girls. Guys, too. They're dr dressing less and less. Because they want to show some form of their body. They want to show some skin. I mean, it's not girls showing off. <clears throat> it's not girls showing off the pretty legs now. Guys are doing that, too. <laughs> and that's just sick. <laughs> but you see, uh, dressing up. Let's be honest, it's like a male prostitute or a whore. That's what it is. How do you know that? Oh, you're just being mean. No, <laughs> because there are actually real cases where, you know, there's this um, girl who is actually uh, sadly raped, but then what the detectives thought that she was a prostitute, and the parents got sorely offended, and they said, no, that's my daughter going to a nightclub. Think about that. Why would she dress similarly like a prostitute? Mm -hmm. See, that is dressing up like a whore, like a prostitute. How about that? See, that's what Satan wants. Satan wants that. But what does God want when he blessed you with the body you created? Modesty. That's what he says. Modesty. Uh, he mentioned that uh, to the women as well at 1 Peter chapter 3 concerning modesty. Modest apparel. That's why in Berkeley, uh, that's why in Santa Cruz, they will have students all naked yeah. sitting down in class. That's a, and that's a sign of a demon-possessed person. If the person's not demon-possessed, they're just taking one of the signs. You might say, how do you know that, preacher? Because a maniac of Gadara was naked too. Yeah. That's a sign of demon possession. Amen. What they like to do is flaunt sin. They want to show shame and guilt. They have no, sh they have no shame, no guilt about their nakedness. They're proud of their body. They're proud of who they are. Okay, but then let's say this person was proud of who he is, how he is made, proud of his body, and all of a sudden he had this tendency, and he's like, you know what, I want a transformation in my body. I, I want to be a woman. Isn't that lying then? You just lied right there. What is this twisted thinking here? You're not proud of your body. No, you just lied if you switched to body surgery right there. How about that? What kind of a twisted world we live in, huh? Not only that, what Satan wants to do is that through this, people go into a fantasy. And they go to a fantasy level where they want to look like their favorite um, TV show that they watch or animal. So, I, so like cosplay, for example. But that's just, uh, that's just one example. But there are people who actually want to dress like a different animal, different person, different being. Why? Why? They're not content with what, how God made them to be. They watch some kind of virtual thing that they want to look like. So obviously, now I'm saying this. Now obviously there's nothing wrong with having like, you know, kids. You know, when they, uh, there are churches who will have like some costume parties, you know, for the kids. There's nothing wrong with that. All right? Nothing wrong dressing up like a mascot if you're going to cheer for your team. But the thing is this. There are people who actually get so much into this that they want to live like this. That's the thing that I'm getting at. That's what I'm kicking against. Is that people? That's why they changed their dressing. You notice that? Because it's something they saw on TV. It's something they saw other people dress up as. So that's why they'll change their uh, hairstyle. That's why they'll change their dressing. That's why they'll change even their body sometimes. Why do they do that? Because of something they saw. But you know, this becomes reality now. It becomes a point where they want to dress up like animals, 
and then you do become an animal yourself. Amen. You're going to look at the book of Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9. We read that, right? Mark chapter 9. And then look at Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. You are going to go through a transformation. You want to look like an animal? Guess what? You will become an animal then. This is a zoo. You know what day and age we live in? We live in a zoo today. And God's going to say, you want to look like a zoo? You want to act like a zoo? You're going to return to the zoo then for all eternity in hell. So, keep, so your hand was at Philippians 3, I trust, but now go to Mark chapter 9. What does the Bible say? We believe the Bible literally. Look at verse 44. Where there what? Worm dieth not, and the fire is not quenched. Look at that. You become a worm in hell fire. What? Really? Yeah, now look at Matthew 23. In Matthew 23. You know why? If you're a lost sinner, your daddy, the devil, he's an aquatic reptilian. He's like a bug. You're going to be just like your father, the devil. You're going to go through a metamorphosis. You're going to go through a change when you, when you get damned at hell. Look at Matthew chapter 23. We'll read verse 33. Ye what? Serpents. Ye generation of what? Vipers. How can ye escape the damnation of hell? See? A snake, worm-like figure. That's what's going to happen to you when you die and you burn in hell for all eternity. Here's another thing right here. So your hands at Philippians chapter 3. Go to Revelation. Go to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20, scripture with scripture. Look at Revelation chapter 20, please. Revelation chapter 20. What happens right here? Hmm. We're going to look at Revelation chapter 20, and then we'll read verse 5. But the rest of the dead lived not, ag not again until the thousand years were finished. This is the first, what? Resurrection. Resurrection. All right. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection. So notice right here that they have a first resurrection here. Huh. Why is that? What is this first resurrection based off of? All right. Now go to, keep your hand at Revelation 20. All right. Keep your hand at Revelation 20. What is our resurrection? Look at Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 21. Philippians chapter 3 and verse 21. So the first resurrection, the Bible says, blessed and holy is he who partakes in the first resurrection, right? So it's good that you partake in the first resurrection. Because in the first resurrection, what it does is that that's where you partake in, where you go through a transformation. Yeah. Philippians 3.21, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things, unto himself. Notice right here that when you get resurrected, your body is going through a transformation. It's going to become like what? Like unto his glorious body. Verse 20, who is he? Is His, the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. You get fashioned, you get transformed into the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. That's your transformation right there. So in eternity, you go through a transformation and that is to be like Jesus. And that's called a resurrection. Okay, if that's the first resurrection here. By the way, this is just a side note. The first resurrection has three separate stages. Three separate stages. I don't know if you knew that. And the saved Christian is part of those three separate stages. The Old Testament saints as well. And then the tribulation saints. But aside from that fact... Let me ask you this question. Then that means there has to be a second resurrection, right? What is the second resurrection? And if that's the case, why is it that lost sinners are likened to who? Satan, who he is. He's a dragon. He's the old serpent. Lord of the flies, bugs. You're seeing something here? You know what that means? Lost sinners... They get their transformation too, likewise, that means. It makes sense. It makes sense. 
That's why they're going through a transformation. Because if these guys are, saved Christians are, why not the lost sinners? We're going to be fashioned like unto him. Why are these people sound like that their form is like him? And this happens in what? Why is it related to hellfire too when they have this uh, different form? Why does he call them serpents? Why does he call them worms in the context where hell is? Hmm. But let's look at Revelation chapter 20 again. Blessed and holy is he, verse 6, right? That part in the first resurrection. Why? Why should you be in the first resurrection? On such the what? Second death hath no power. So then this other resurrection, that's not the first resurrection, is going to be related to hell. See, they're going through a resurrection. They're going through a transformation. Let's keep reading. We're going to read verse 12. And I saw the dead, small and great, stand before God, and the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged out of those things which were written in the books according to their works. See, the dead come out, and the sea gave up the dead which were in it. See, these dead are resurrected. There's your second resurrection. And death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And they were judged every man according to their works. Look at that. They're going through a resurrection here. And you know what their resurrection is? You know what their form is? We read those verses. It's going to be based off of uh, Mark 9 and Matthew 23. They want to look like that. They want to look like a zoo. God returned them to the zoo. God returned them to the zoo. But then what we want is to be the form of Jesus Christ himself. Now here's something very interesting concerning saved Christians. We're going to look at the book of Matthew. Matthew. Here's the thing about you ladies that you want to listen up. Now this is, this is going to be a big blessing to you. This is going to be a big blessing to you. We're going to look at the book of Matthew. And then we'll look at chapter, I believe it's 19. We're going to look at chapter 19. Okay then, we're going to look at the book of Matthew. And then uh, I believe it's going to be chapter 19. If not, then I will eventually find it somewhere. But, uh, in, <laughs> but in the passage, what did Jesus say when one of the uh, Sadducees or the Pharisees want to trap Jesus Christ? He actually, uh, they asked him, who is he going to marry at the resurrection? Uh, this wife who suffered the death of several different husbands. But then Jesus Christ said that ye do err not knowing the scriptures, because in the resurrection, right, that transformation, they don't marry or they're not given in marriage. That's what he pointed out to them. So let's see right here. I think I found it. Matthew 22. Matthew 22, that's right, Matthew chapter 22, and then verse 30. Matthew 22, verse 30. So when they transform into Jesus, you got to understand this. This is literal. This is literal. You might say, wait, literal? Literal. Then you ladies are saying, wait, then that means I'm going to become a man? Well, let me, let, me, let me teach you right here before there's some misunderstanding spreading right here. Okay, let's look at Matthew chapter 22. And then we'll read uh, 22, verse 30. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the what? Angels of God in heaven. Look up every verse in the Bible that mentions an angel. It's always a what? Man. Jesus, is he a woman or a man? Man. You're going to have the body of who? Jesus. Not only that, you know what you are called? You're not called daughters of God. You're called, look at the book of 1 John, chapter 3. Sons of God. Look at 1 John, chapter 3. 1 John, chapter 3. Notice this right here. That's why it makes sense there is no marriage in heaven. See that? Why? You're all going to be males. You might say, why is that, Pastor? Why would God do that? You know why? Here's a simple answer. It's not the idea where you focus about becoming a man, then your focus is wrong. You're, you're looking at the wrong picture here. Who are you supposed to be focusing on? Is it no greater honor than for you to look like God himself who created all of heaven and earth? 
That's what you got to be looking at. See, it's not a matter of, oh, it's gross, I'm going to look like a man and stuff like that. No, the idea is this. The idea is, is that God wants you to look like him. That's the focus, and that's everything what he wants you to look like. When you think that way, there is no greater honor. You understand this too. Man is changing too, not just women. Man is changing too, not women. So man is not, I'm not going to look like this as a man. I'm going to look exactly like Jesus. Yes, Women are going to look exactly like Jesus. That's See, that's the idea. doesn't matter if you're woman or man. You're both going to change no matter what. But you're going to look like God Almighty himself, Jehovah. Amen. Shouldn't that touch your heart? Yes, sir. 1 John chapter 3, we'll read verse 1. Behold what manner of love the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the what? Son. Look at that. See, we're called sons of God. Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, Jesus appear, we shall be what? Like him. But this is more plain. For we shall see him as he is. See, exactly like him, like Jesus Christ. Like how you see Jesus Christ when he appears, you're going to look exactly like that. How about that? That's very sobering. That's very humbling that you would look like the, like the Lord Jesus Christ. What a great honor. What a great privilege to be like God Almighty. That's why you're called the what? The who? Body of Christ. How about that? That's why you're called what? Sons of God. That's why you're called Christians. I don't know if you knew what this means. Christians mean little Christ. Didn't you know that? How about that? That's why the Holy Spirit is in you. Amen. That's the real you, right? The, Holy, uh, the spiritual nature within you. That's, right. That's a male. Yeah. See? How about that? Everything makes sense now. Sure. Now, you go to your pastor in your church. See if they teach this stuff. 